So um, I'm going to talk about a venture that I started with uh, a couple of people 22 years ago. It's been a long time. And um, so I'll lead you through the show um, and uh, make a couple of comments along the way. Um, I, in preparing the show, I d had to dig into, some, into my archives and um, I didn't have access to everything. So excuse the graininess of uh, some of the images because they were just sort of put together on the fly. Um, so here we go. So, um, like some good ventures, uh, we started off in a garage. And um, it was originally um, three single, actually four single practitioners. Uh, one of them was in Sacramento, um, uh, Mark in Sacramento. Jim on the right um, was uh, working out of his house in Petaluma. Um, and I was... Uh, down in Sonoma. So we were all in Sonoma County. And uh, we all got together with uh, Bill. Um, I met Bill at an ASLA meeting uh, here in the city. And um, we talked about collaboration and getting together to do some bigger projects, you know, more than we were capable of as um, single practitioners or, you know, going, going around the Bay Area. Um, being a consultant to other landscape architects, which I was doing for a couple of years prior to um, forming, um, cooking up this this firm, and uh, the first place we did that was in Bill's Bill's garage, um, quite rustic. It was a place of extremes: cold in the winter, hot in the summer. Uh, we had a little bit of insulation that that silver foil bubble wrap. He, he, we put that on, and we had a couple of drafting tables. We had one computer. Um, we were just starting to use email. Um, before that, it was uh, courier services and faxes and things like that, you know, those things of the mid-90s. the mid -90s. And uh, so CAD was um, somewhat alien to us. Um, so one of our first hires was somebody who knew a little bit about CAD. and. Uh, so we, um, she sort of uh, coexisted with us in there and worked from home as well. Um, but we were in this, in this garage for, for about a year. Um, that's the, the outside, that's Bill's house. Uh, he no longer lives there, but um, this, was, this was back in, uh, probably taken in the late 90s. Uh, note the dog, the dog was a part of our studio as well, Augie, and um, he would retrieve the ball all the time. Uh, so, um, excuse the, the grainy picture up there of, of Jim. Um, so this was us in our younger years. Um, Bill actually, more recent picture, but Mark, and then um, that's what I looked like 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we got together and we, we we talked about um, starting a firm, um, you know, what were our values, um, you know, how, how would this all come together? And we decided that we needed, needed uh, some outside help, so we hired a business consultant. Oh, um, there was actually another partner that, that came into the mix um, sort of halfway through our, our stint in the garage. Jane Marks. So um, I'll give you a little bit of background um, on them in, in just a moment. Um, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll. So Jim, Jim disappeared after about three or four years because he, he just couldn't. He was a great designer, but he, didn't, he couldn't meet budgets. And he, he wasn't very good at, um, with employees. He's sort of a, you know, he, he's, he was very good at working on his own, but he just couldn't, couldn't manage to, to be part of the group. So, um, and, and it was five, and it was quadriga, and so it, would, it was quintriga for a while, and then it reverted back to quadriga. So, um, 
the, the backgrounds uh, were varied. Um, my background, uh, as Jeff introduced me, um, I sort of came um, full circle um, from starting at the GSD, uh, Harvard GSD, in the early 80s. And um, I got quite a bit of uh, professional experience working for larger firms, SWA, EDA, um, POD, which was a, um, a pretty large regional firm um, that was headquartered down in Southern California. Um, I worked for them for quite a few years. Um, I lived down in, in Orange County. I went from, from New England, from Boston, um, to Houston, Texas, the, the Texas office of, of SWA. Um, to, um, that was about two years. Um, I, I've been through a couple of recessions. Um, Texas had a recession in the mid 80s and uh, so um, the office kind of emptied out and I emptied out with it and ended up in, in um, Southern California in, in Orange County and uh, where I spent about seven years working for POD. Uh, then POD got um, bought by Sasaki. And by the way, POD, um, there were a couple of um, people that here that worked for POD. Uh, Heather and Owen um, worked there. And um, Owen went on to Sasaki and was a partner here in the San Francisco firm for quite a number of years. So, um, but when POD dissolved, I, I worked at EDA. And I worked on a lot of international projects there in Japan and in the Middle East. And, um, and then um, as a consultant in, in Germany, in Berlin, for about half a year, um, which was an interesting, uh, interesting aside from Southern California, just a, a different mix. I'm a, a, a German speaker. I grew up in Germany. Um, so I was picked for the job, you know. It's, it was uh, nice to have a second language. Um, those skills come in handy uh, sometimes in, in any profession. So um, from there, I um, came back, came back home um, to my, um, my sole practice out of my house. And I thought, well, you know, I, I need to be working in an office. I need to need to be interacting with with uh, some some other people. I had a dog, but that just wasn't enough. And uh, and I had a few I had a few clients, but um, I, I just wanted to um, do something a little bit more meaningful. So I um, had a couple of friends that worked at um, PWP, and um, Peter Walker was my mentor during during graduate school. So, you know, I, I knew him, um, had two studios with him, and, and this, is, this is him during his younger years um, when I knew him. Um, here he is now. Um, but I, um, and he was doing some, some work in, in, uh, in Germany for a couple of architects in Berlin and Munich. And um, this was one of the projects I worked on. It's the Sony, Sony Center in, in, in Berlin. Um, so I thought, you know, this, this is going to be great. But I, kn I, I knew I was, you know, it was a catalyst to get me to the Bay Area, which is where I wanted to be. Um, and um, so, I, so I packed up my bags and came up here and um, worked at Peter Walker's office for about a year. And that's about as much as I could stand <laughs> there. It was... It was, uh, it was hard work. It was interesting. Uh, the office was uh, not, not to my liking, really. Um, and I moved on. Uh, th this is, um, some of you have probably been over to Peter Walker's office. Um, so open studio environment. And um, actually, those, those working envi environments influenced my the 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 layouts of of our firm uh, eventually so um, they always ended up being being open environments 
So, um, oh, Jane's missing. I just rearranged the slides, but um, I can speak to, let's see, um, to my other partners. Um, Bill and uh, Mark had worked together in San Diego um, for the Austin Hansen Group, and they did a lot of resort work and um, some urban work. And uh, Jane had um, worked locally in Santa Rosa. She knew she had a lot of connections in Santa Rosa, so um, it was great to have her on board. She worked for a, um, a civil engineering firm that also had a landscape architecture department. So we um, got got different. Like, you know, we were we came together with different perspectives, different skill sets, um, somewhat different outlooks, but we figured on um, on um, oh, there she is. Um, you know, coming together to formulate a, a a working relationship and starting a firm, and so we we cast around for about a year with the the business consultant and um, talking about values and um, examining different models of um, how other offices worked. Um, so we brought a lot of things to the table and um, this is just an example of of a model um, from Charles Eames's office. Um, maybe some of you have seen this diagram. It's Actually, a pretty, um, pretty famous diagram. Not famous, but um, it's. Uh, I've, I've seen it a, a number of times. So um, it's sort of like a Venn diagram, where where you you draw circles and then then um, you know figure on the on on what values uh, everyone shares and um, whether they be. Uh, Firm values or values that um, um, you'd want to have in a client. Um, so we we formed lists, created lists of of you know what what we wanted, what kind of clients we'd want to work with, what sort of projects we want to work on, um, and we went through a lot of um, iterations and. You know, talked a lot and talked with a business consultant. The business consultant was very pragmatic and told us, you know, you got to do this, this, and this, and this is your, you've got to, you've got to have so many billable hours. You've got to, um, you know, do, jump through a couple of different hoops to make this all work um, and not take pay for, for, you know, half a year while you're doing it because you need to, you need to do the work to get paid, and it takes a while to get paid, and you know, get get everything up to speed. So we we all agreed to that. Uh, we sat in the garage, uh, trying to think up a name for the company. We didn't want to use our names. We wanted something that would carry on and be recognizable. And you know, um, we actually got quite a quite a number of. Uh, Questions about well, what is quadriga? And quadriga is a uh, Latin term for team of four. Um, team of four horses abreast, um, like Ben Hur. You know, just pulling equally um, at the same at the same pace at the same level. So that's that's how how that got got formed. And then we hired a. a a graphics firm to come up with the, the logo. And this was the first uh, generation of, of, the, of our logo. So we you know, formulated mission statements um, and uh, performing as a team, you know, being nurturing, respecting, uh, providing a fun work environment. Those those kind of qualities. Um, we incorporated. We were um, a corporation, a C corporation. So we had a lawyer drop the papers. You have to, when you're a corporation, you have to um, pay a tax every year to be a corporation. So we 
we did that, and we had to um, have titles. Off, they're, they're officers of the corporation, so we, we uh, you know, we were all, we were all equal. So we took turns uh, every three years, um, being a president, a treasurer, and a secretary, and uh, so that was that was a lot of fun. There, there was there was this, this inward facing and outward facing of the of the firm. Some clients expected us to have these titles, and um, to us they were. Um, not meaningless, but um, they just meant that you know if there was a hierarchy and we wanted to be a we wanted to be a flat firm. We had shares. We had buy sell agreements, a lot of legal legal stuff. Um, you know, we did the numbers. We had a bookkeeper. Uh, our second employee was a uh, an office manager that also did our books because we just didn't want to get involved too much. We wanted the oversight, but we didn't want to um, be QuickBooks experts. But eventually we all became QuickBooks experts. <laughs> um, so this was early on, you know, a, a, a meager, meager balance sheet, but it was a start. Um, and we grew. We uh, got out of the garage after a year. Um, Mark had always had the, the office in Sacramento, but we expanded that as well. Um, and this was taken probably in about 2002. Um, so the concept of our office was that we were a regional firm. And to be a regional firm, you have to, you know, have a fairly broad base. We had two offices that made us a regional firm, not a local firm. So um, the concept was that we were one office connected by a, a long corridor. And uh, two, two locations equals, two or more locations equals a, a regional firm. So early projects. Um, one of the... Uh, Big pluses uh, early on was that um, we had a, a client that um, we called him Santa Claus um, because he would stop by the office with a new project every couple of weeks or so, and it was the uh, the planning um, the the planning director at Sonoma State University, and uh, Sonoma State was going through a uh, a long period of expansion, and uh, the expansion included um, a, a housing project, one of the first we worked on here. Um, it included um, a a library, central library. Uh, the campus was formed, started in the 60s, and there were a few buildings. This this was the central core of the campus that was there. And then it eventually expanded. This is student housing over here, but they they needed more housing. Um, Bill had been involved in the sports facilities over here, but prior to to um, forming the company, and um, then we um, we got involved with the uh, the Green Music Center, which is a um, a concert venue. It's an indoor outdoor con concert venue that's modeled after um, Tanglewood, which is in in Western Massachusetts, it's a um, pretty well-known venue for classical con concerts in the summer, and, and the, the, uh, the, the concerts happen. Some of them happen outdoors under a band shell, but um, then in the 80s, um, they hired an architect to do um, to do an indoor-outdoor facility. Um, so it's an indoor concert hall with a big roll-up door at one end. And so the the um, the president of the university was just really intrigued with this concept, and so um, the the same same was replicated at Sonoma State. However, um, the project went um, went into over overruns, cost overruns. Uh, it was um, developed during a period of uh, 
of a booming economy and um, materials were getting expensive and so and, and then the funding the funding mechanism was um, fairly restrained and so we went through about three different iterations, three or four different iterations, all the way through construction drawings to, to bid, and then the, the, the bids came in too high. And we had to go back to the drawing board and, and you know, back to concept, really. Um, so originally it was, a, I think, an $80 million project, and the one that got built was about six years later was, was a $110 million project. So um, it was, but, but it, uh, it provided us with a lot of work. It was one of our big clients early on. So that was, uh, it, it's nice to, to have long-term guaranteed work um, when you're a, a young firm and when you don't have the, the resources. So um, that's actually one of the keys to starting a su successful firm is to um, cultivate a client that will um, come back to you again and again and again for, uh, for more work and somebody who's really good to work with. So, um, so these are some of the projects, uh, early housing project that was a competition. We, we won it. I think we just had you know a um, pretty good relationship with the, the college and um, got the project. And then that's the, the library um, project that was built in the early 2000s. So this is, a, this is an early scheme of the, uh, the concert facility. Uh, a lot of parking, a um, lot of uh, stormwater management going on in this, in this parking lot. A lot of bio swales and bio retention facilities. There's a, there's a creek along here. Uh, a big berm that we um, designed for um, noise mitigation from the adjacent uh, roads. Um, so I don't want that. Um, so this is the this is how it looks now. Seating for about three thousand, no, fourteen hundred inside, and about three to five thousand outside. It's pretty nice. Go there in the summer sometime. Um, in Sacramento, we won a, a design competition for Cesar Chavez Plaza, which is the green space in front of City Hall um, at uh, 10th and J Streets. Um, and so we were um, up against some pretty stiff competition. We were very pleased to get the project. Um, RHA was one of the competitors, and we thought, you know, great, we, we got this one. So um, this was a this was a good project that, uh, that we did in the late, late 90s. And then adjacent to that, um, City Hall, we um, were involved with uh, some architects. Actually, it was a, um, a San Francisco firm, uh, Gordon Chong and Associates, which um, Later morphed into WRNS, and um, so we we uh, helped helped with this project, uh, City Hall Annex. And then we did a variety of um, we we were really pretty well diversified. We did a lot of housing. We did um, streetscapes. We did infill housing, um, parks. Um, a little bit of residential. Um, I had a relationship with an architect that did really high-end houses um, just north of Santa Rosa, and um, we got involved with that. Some of the clients were really nice, but um, we decided after a while that doing residential work wasn't really um, what we wanted to do. Um, the clients were um, sometimes difficult because you had a husband-wife situation and uh, you were kind of stuck in the middle sometimes and that, that didn't always work out. <laughs> and they, they weren't really repeat clients. They were, they were good references, but um, we just didn't 
didn't want to do too much of that. Uh, we grew. Um, this is still in our B, B Street location. We had first we had the upstairs, then we had the downstairs um, combined, and uh, the Sacramento office kind of filled out their space. Um, and uh, we were a firm of, I don't know, uh, you know, 15, 16 people. <coughs> so most of, the, most of our um, hires came from uh, UC Davis. Um, Mark had a, a, a teaching gig at, at UC Davis. Um, it would probably happen that, you know, if Quadriga, if I were still part of Quadriga, I would pull some of you guys to, to work at Quadriga if you wanted to live up in Santa Rosa or at, in Sacramento. Um, that was sometimes an issue, um, getting people um, to live in, in Santa Rosa. The, the talent, talent's down here. Um, and we, we sometimes did a, 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 a regional or a national uh, search. And our national search um, yielded um, a, uh, a guy from Germany and somebody from Canada who we, who we hired. So we also got involved in, in the, uh, the H-1B process, you know, the, 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 uh, the visa process and supporting them, sponsoring them. Um, so th there, there are a lot of, lot of aspects of uh, running an office that you don't really anticipate until you actually do uh, get into the minutia of it. Um, we, uh, periodically we had retreats. We would um, go someplace, go, go out, um, went to Sea Ranch one time and a um, couple of other locations and we, were, we would um, reevaluate, you know, where, where we were, um, where we wanted to go. And um, we came up with, um, you know, some abstract models sometimes, you know, like the, the, uh, the, the, the employees sort of spinning uh, in, a, in a shot class. Uh, so, you know, we, we kind of reached back into our collective conscious to, to figure out what we wanted to do, where we wanted to go how big we wanted to get um, professional and family values and, you know, other personal values played into it. Um, so this was, this was in the year 2000 and we wanted, you know, we had a 10 year plan, um, but it kind of gotten in the way, you know, 2008 happened and the, the Lehman Brothers collapsed, and a lot of the projects that we were working on, um, the, the, the funding just dried up. And uh, Jerry Brown came into office and got rid of the development agencies, um, and that dried up too. So the state money dried up, the private money dried up, and um, so we had to we had to uh, we had to downsize, and it was it was painful because you, you spend these years building, building things up, but you have to be flexible to survive. So we did. And we rethought, you know, constantly we're rethinking the process. How, how do we do the work? And um, how does it get done? And we wanted to have fun doing it. We didn't want to get bored. And um, I had a lot of fun doing um, tenant improvements for, for our offices. We, um, this was um, planned for the Sacramento office. We were on J Street, had about 4,000 square feet, and we had to accommodate more people. Um, so this, this plan accommodated about um, 14, 15 people. And, uh, it was it was fun. Did the same same for the uh, the Santa Rosa office. Um, I don't have any interior pictures of that, but that was a, a pretty pretty neat um, 
Uh, pretty neat design. It's a kind of, and then, then we, you know, did some promotional work, you know, um, to keep, keep us current and aware with our clients and potential clients. So we sent, periodically sent out mailers like this. And then we um, reinvented our, our website many, many times. And it was difficult in the early years because the software was not very intuitive. And so we had to hire people to, to help us. And um, it was, uh, we, we spent quite a bit of time just getting them on board. Eventually we did, did this in-house and this was sort of our first in-house attempt at, um, at website development. And, um, so these these are like just mock-ups that I that I found just, just to to throw up there. And, um, you know, one of them was you know where where are you from or where have you been in the world? And uh, so uh, in terms of employee travels and acknowledging the the our knowledge base and kind of and, and trying to communicate that to that to to our clients. And then of course you know projects and. Um, the the, uh, the the human um, the knowledge base the, the our, our employees uh, bios uh, the different kinds of services all of these things that you put on your on your website um, we had mailers um, that we would send out this is a project that we did for a, uh, a tribe up in um, Rumsey. Rumsey is, um, where is that? It's uh, north, northwest of Sacramento. It's in a beautiful, beautiful area, uh, Cape Valley, uh, agricultural, um, and you know, just beautiful um, landscape. And this, this tribe uh, had their casino up and running down the road and making a lot of money and so they wanted to create their uh, a, a community, a whole community, and so we we in, indulged them in that. Another big project that lasted maybe three or four years. Um, so we had office parties and uh, you know Christmas parties and and like white elephant gift exchanges and uh, it was silly at times, but you know just a lot of fun. It's good. Good morale builder. We went on, on retreats. Uh, this at, um, and you know celebrated birthdays. So the the uh, the office managers were really good at orchestrating the, those things. And we had summer picnics and goofed around. So then later projects. How are we doing on time? Okay. Um, we got involved in a lot of wineries, you know, being up in Santa Rosa, wine country. We, we did, did quite a few wineries. Uh, Chateau Saint Jean Winery was you know, one of our larger clients. Um, and then there were a couple of smaller boutique hotels that we got involved with, you know, bocce courts and pools and things like that. Um, this is a project that um, I worked on um, for seven years. A big project, um, half a billion dollar project. It was an expansion project. Um, the core was developed in the um, early 2000s, and uh, Kaiser was growing. It's a regional medical facility, um, and. Uh, so we spent, I, I figured, about 6,500 hours on this project over those years. So it was, um, you know, pretty rewarding project in the end. Um, some of the some of it was fairly rote, you know, uh, putting trees in parking lots, and um, but also dealing with a lot of topography and um, um, keeping this place operational while the while the construction was underway. It was, it had about five or, no, six or seven phases. Um, and uh, the landscape was totally redone except for this 
little courtyard here. So, so we did this, worked on this from, uh, from master plan all the way through construction. And the, this was one of the first projects. It was a, um, a uh, hospital bed expansion. And so we did the courtyard. And then from there, the, the project grew. And our Sacramento office um, got involved in a whole slew of different projects, um, doing a memorial on the, on the state capitol grounds, um, <laughs> a lot of transit projects, um, Folsom Transit Center on the left. And we got into um, parks and horticultural centers and doing recreational, um, some public, some private recreational uh, facilities. And then um, we also did, we did a lot, got involved in a lot of infill housing for uh, nonprofit um, companies, d developers. Um, this is uh, Midpen mid um, development down in San Mateo. And I put the affordable housing in, in you know, quotation marks because uh, uh, this is this development's situated on uh, Camino, Camino Real in San Mateo and that's just prime real estate now so I'm, I'm wondering if these apartments are uh, affordable they, they were at the time certain income group and then there are other other uh, affordable housing projects that we we worked on uh, various uh, local architects. The one on the left is down in near Sonoma, and the other two are uh, up in, one's in Windsor, one's in Santa Rosa. And then this is uh, more of a for-profit uh, housing development in, in Petaluma. Quarry Heights, um, and we, um, got involved in the master planning of this um, very early on, just, you know, just going through reams of um, trace paper, trying to figure out the grades on this. This is an old quarry project, an old quarry. And uh, so a lot, of, a lot of dirt, they had to fill a 100 foot deep hole on this site. And uh, so a lot of dirt got moved around. This is, we inherited this, this project from a civil engineer and the, the previous plan just didn't, didn't work very well. So we, we totally redesigned it. We had all of these conditions of approval that we had to meet. You know, it's, it, it went through an environmental process before and so we had to meet all of those criteria. And we did eventually. So this was uh, started in 2005. It's still being built um, in phases. Um, we went through 17 um, design review board meetings at the city of Petaluma, which was uh, a lot of late nights. Um, so if you're, you know, getting into an office and you're going through an entitlement process, a lot of these, a lot of these design review meetings, um, they end up just going on forever and um, ad nauseum too. It, it sometimes gets very political and and. Uh, it doesn't doesn't make sense. We went through this. We went to 17 meetings um, before we finally <laughs> got the project approved. You are, you have a lot of um, people that will get up and grandstand and try and roadblock the project, and you have half the city council wanting it and the other half not. So um, that's that's uh, another another. Uh, another thing you can look forward to in your career. Uh, we worked on a lot of schools, um, from elementary schools. Um, this was for a small school district in, in Santa Rosa. Um, typically, we um, put together image boards uh, to explain some of the concepts. So this is an example of that. Um, this project that um, 
that I managed with um, my partner Jane. This is a high school, ground up. Um, they were just um, bare fields um, when we started. Uh, 2000 student high school, uh, you know, with all the, all the facilities. Um, the, uh, this was fairly, a fairly quick design process, um, meaning about two years. Um, our construction document set, um, the total 30 by 42 uh, set, 900, 900 sheets. And then, you know, reams of um, written specifications as well. Um, our part um, was, I think we had 11, our base was uh, 11 uh, sheets that were matched. Um, so we did hardscape grading, irrigation planting, um, y you know, and all the details. So times, times 11 or 12. So it, it, it added up to be uh, quite a bit. Um, we were involved with, uh, aside from uh, Sonoma State University, we, we did quite a few master plans, and this one's for uh, CSU Chico. We worked with a, a, uh, an architect from Los Angeles, um, old established firm. They have a lot of high rises in, in, uh, in LA, but um, one of the things they are really strong in is, is campus planning, and uh, so we we worked with them. It was kind of a refreshing experience to work with somebody, you know, outside of the region. And uh, it's a, also a beautiful campus. So we, uh, we uh, worked on the master plan, and then we also um, got to work on several projects um, from concept through construction. Um, and this is, uh, this is the food service and housing, so sort of north, northwest part of campus and uh, designed a, a plaza. The, the layout here is a little different, but um, that's how it, how it ended up. We, we had vertical columns, but the administration was concerned about liability and students climbing on top of, the, on top of these basalt columns. Um, so we, we laid them down, and they became places to sit. Um, yeah, and then you know back to back to Sonoma State. Um, it grew. We did more housing over here, um, and got involved in a couple other projects, um, along with you know finishing up the green the green music center. And I threw this up here. This is um, a, a a time chart. So starting in. Uh, 1997 and ending up today, um, the green represents the um, people that are currently working at, at Quadriga, and then the grays are the past employees, me being one of them. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm up here at the top. I lasted until 2013, and now I'm here. So. Um, 21 years, 83 employees. It's quite a quite a legacy. I'm, you know, it's you 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 make your mark, not just for yourself, but for a lot for a lot of other people too. And this is Quadriga today. Um, slimmed down, still two offices: um, Sacramento and Santa Rosa. And um, we. Um, have two principals, um, Christine and John, and they they grew with us. Um, John was has been with Quadriga since uh, about 2001, and Christine is a little bit more recent, uh, probably 2005. Um, and so they they carry on. the 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 last original partner, my partner Bill, um, he retired in May, so it's a new generation. And uh, so these people are, some of them are UC Davis, some of them are from the, from the East Coast, um, actually several from the East Coast. And um, so that's, uh, that's our current office in Santa Rosa. It's a three minute walk from my house. So I go over there sometimes <laughs> to do stuff. 
And if you're interested, you can go check out quadrigainc.com. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any uh, questions are welcome. I have a question. Sure. Um, when you went from the original four of you, and you, had, you started growing, so presumably you were getting more work, um, how did you make the transition to, uh, how do I say this, so that you were ending up spending all of your time managing your office and employees, but could continue to pursue getting new work and then doing the work that yeah. you wanted to do. Right. So that because the, the whole growth process can become a something that's really intractable and you get, you know, it's like a rat's nest. Well, we, we divided and conquered. And um, some, some of us partners were rainmakers and others were managers. And the, the, the natural rainmaker was uh, Mark Truscott. Um, he was uh, very active in, in Sacramento, got involved in a lot of civic um, projects, um, did a lot of volunteer work, uh, ended up becoming a, an ASLA f fellow because of the service aspect that he provided uh, to that region. And so through him we got, you know, a lot of work evolved that way in the Sacramento office. Um, in Santa Rosa, um, I don't know, between th the three of us, uh, Jane, uh, myself, and Bill, um, we just um, cultivated our clients, got the work, managed that work. Um, our employees got involved in, you know, at first in a sort of a, a drafting capacity, a design capacity. Um, as they, as the, the firm grew, they managed um, projects as well. So it just sort of or evolved organically over time. Yeah. As the, the, the chemistry was important mm -hmm. to, to do that. Uh, we, we didn't really have, we weren't big on titles mm -hmm. internally. Um, externally, you know, our business cards reflected, you know, our, our position, but internally we tended to be more collegial with from top to bottom. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Sure. When you started uh, hiring new people to join the crew, what were your, I guess, requirements? Question yes. So what were the expectations of new employees yes. when we hired them? Yeah. Um, well, they, um, we were somewhat opportunistic in hiring. Um, we, had, we had enough work. Um, sometimes we didn't have enough work, but if there was somebody that, um, that was known to us or somebody that was interested in the firm, uh, it was more of a matter of chemistry, of being able to... Um, to relate to them and for them to relate to us and you know there's there there is this aspect of of being being easygoing and open um, and most of who we hired worked out that way there were a few that that just didn't and they didn't last didn't last very long Um, well, if they weren't taking direction very well, or if they, you know, if there was a lot of um, disagreement, um, and you know, we we tried to be tried to talk through any dilemmas that there were. Um, you know, we gave gave people a lot of a lot of a lot of leeway. You know, a lot of a lot of room to to grow and to, to kind of find themselves, but sometimes um, people couldn't find themselves. And um, I think what, people had to be able to think independently. So our expectation was we, we hired people that had uh, undergraduate degrees. They, they, are, they were all 
LAs, pretty much. Um, and um, so when you, you know, when you have an LA degree, you have, the, you have enough in the way of design tools and technical tools to, to uh, get started in the firm. And so that, that was our expectation. Licensed, right? I'm licensed. Yeah. yeah. When did you get licensed, and why? Why? And did your partners? Are they? Did they get licensed as well? Yeah, they were all licensed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I got licensed in 1988 when I was working at Pod, and uh, so it was uh, just important for me to to be, you know, to be a landscape architect, and uh, my. My parents expected me to, as well. <laughs> so it's like, way. yeah. <laughs> so I got licensed, and uh, uh, it uh, it it was daunting um, because I heard that so many of my friends who was who were working at Pod and elsewhere, you know, they'd taken the exam and they just they just couldn't get through it. Especially the the designers, the designers failed the design section repeatedly. And um, so I, I went to, I took some seminars at UCLA. They had a, um, uh, some weekend courses on how to take the exam. It's not, not, you know, how good are you as a landscape architect, but how do you take the test? And so the trick with the design section was to follow the directions. And a lot of designers are not good at following directions. You know, they just get mired in, in you know, whatever, and they run out of time. So it's just getting all the, all the things, that, all the requirements down. It might not look like a nice design, but you met all the requirements. So um, that's, that's how you do it. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the other... Other principals were all, all licensed. You know, we were all single practitioners, sole practitioners coming together. Yeah. yeah. So, and how many years did you work before you started Quadriga? So um, it was. Um, I worked uh, about twelve years prior. So, I think it was really important to have that that experience working for other offices because it gave you kind of a perspective on on what you really wanted to do and how an office was run it, or or you know how how not to run an office um, you don't don't want to repeat the mistakes that that you um, that you perceived in other offices that either got you laid off or um, I didn't get laid off because um, it was more because of lack of work, um, but right, but but then you also gain the experience of well you know if I start a firm I don't want to be in a position where where I want to lay off people I want uh, to be in a position a positive position of of growth and uh, so we were very diversified right from the from the get go. Um, but the uh, 2008 recession just killed a lot of landscape architects or, yeah. you know, set them back quite a bit. Yes? Besides um, having the prior connections or the sort of uh, Santa Claus client, how else did you manage to get clients with your DNA? So we uh, went after RFPs, requests for proposals. And um, we had a, a pretty good hit rate on those during, you know, good, good times. We usually got um, one out of three. So, um, but it's, it's quite expensive to go after RFPs, especially the ones, the, the good ones, um, because you spend a lot of time putting together your marketing material. And uh, since, since the recession, a lot of design firms that go after RFPs do all the concept and design development work prior to 
actually getting the project, if they get the project. So uh, it's a, you know, it's, it's kind of tricky and risky <laughs> to, to do that, to spend, uh, you know, maybe 30 or $50,000 to go after a project and not get it. So yeah, RFPs. We um, we liked our repeat clients. You know, we cultivated those. Word of mouth was another another way we got projects. Um, you know, you develop a reputation, and uh, you cultivate the reputation. Make sure it's make sure it's good. Um, we did post post project evaluations, follow up with clients. Um, we had a, a, uh, a housing client. They have a lot of apartment projects around the Bay Area. We worked, we worked for them, but we always followed up with them after each project to make sure that uh, they were happy. And uh, even if they weren't happy, just the fact that you're following up is, yeah. is a big plus. I see you, uh, I see somebody else being the, well, the principal, the principal. Mm -hmm. Sure. So how, at what point did you guys realize or how did you transition to a less... Uh, so uh, handing over the project yeah. to somebody else, yeah. Well, it depends, depends on what your workload is. You know, uh, other partners might have gotten a, another big project and maybe you didn't have enough to keep you busy. So the, the, the management of the project um, sometimes got transferred or sometimes we shared, shared roles for a while and then, then, um, then you know, um, for instance, that big Kaiser Hospital project um, was initiated by Mark because he had the connections with the, okay. with the architect. Um, but then I took over. Uh -huh. um, okay. So it kind of worked uh, in, in many directions that way. I just saw a new principal, so I was wondering, well, you started retiring, other people started retiring. Yeah. And so we, we um, cultivated, we uh, developed um, the skills for, for the younger people to take over. And it's, it's funny because we, we kind of threw it open to, to everyone in the company. You know, do you, do you want to um, develop into a longer term relationship with this firm? And if you do, um, you know, if you want to take the responsibility of ownership, uh, we can make that happen for you. So we, we had conversations with a number of people, and oddly enough, a lot of people didn't want to, they didn't want to have that responsibility. Yeah. But those that did, we, we, um, we cultivated so So John and Christine uh, came out of a pool of, of um, I don't know, five or six people that we, were, we thought might be interested in ownership transition. Okay. So. Okay. Well, that is um, it. It is seven o'clock. So, uh, thank you for coming. Yeah.